Tonight on KGW News, a real life game of cat and mouse in a KGW investigation into the dangers of deep fakes. I think it's terrible that people would prey upon a dead man. Also ahead, a guilty plea in a deadly case of road rage. And the car pulled up parallel to us and just started shooting. Why the man who pulled the trigger won't be going to prison. Plus, it is time to break it up. The landmark lawsuit that could forever change the way you buy concert tickets. And later, he did like really good and he's accomplished so much. How a student turned scientist is showing kids in Camus not even the sky is the limit. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko. We begin at 11 with the end of the road for a case that started with the murder of a man on an Oregon highway two summers ago, right in front of his wife. As Alma McCarty reports tonight, for some involved, the plea and the sentence appear to be deeply unsatisfying. Nearly two years ago, on the drive back from the Oregon coast, a road rage incident would forever change Dennis Anderson's family. On July 13th, 2022, Anderson was shot and killed just west of Grand Ronde on Highway 18. He was 45 years old. KGW spoke with his wife, Brandy Goldsberry, days after his murder. And I don't know if I fully come to terms with the idea that he's not coming home. When the pair initially pulled onto the highway, the suspect in the car behind them got mad and passed them. Then that suspect waited on the side of the road for the couple to pass, then tailed them aggressively, prompting Anderson to stop on the shoulder. His wife recalled what happened next. Dennis pulled over and he stepped out of the vehicle and the car pulled up parallel to us and just started shooting. And I was in my seatbelt. I couldn't get out of my seat, you know, fast enough. And there was just lots of shooting. That suspect, later identified as 24-year-old Justin McAnulty, driving this black BMW, shot Anderson nine times and sped off. On Thursday, McAnulty pled guilty except for insanity for second-degree murder. A Polk County judge sentenced him to a lifetime commitment and confinement at the Oregon State Hospital. Goldsberry delivered her victim's statement in court, which reads in part, I watched the person I loved take his last breaths lying lifeless on gravel on the side of the road after you shot him nine times. It seemed unreal an eternity in one moment. I watched you holding your weapon with both hands, pulling the trigger over and over. I will never unsee that. These actions are not of man, but a monster. The Polk County DA also responding to the plea and sentencing today, calling the outcome, quote, extremely disappointing and writing while McAnulty's guilty plea at long last takes responsibility for killing Mr. Anderson, I strongly believe that Mr. McAnulty presents a risk to community safety and should be securely confined for the remainder of his life. David? Yeah, feels like a case where everybody to some extent loses here. Thank you, Alma. To get you caught up on tonight's other headlines, Beaverton police have made an arrest in a road rage incident that we told you about earlier this week. This was last Friday along Murray Boulevard when a woman was driving her children home from school. She shared images recorded by her Tesla showing the motorcyclist hitting and kicking the car before she says he pulled a knife and allegedly threatened to kill her. A tip led to a suspect who it turns out was already in the Washington County Jail. Police say 33-year-old Joseph Lee had been arrested after a second menacing incident the following day where he allegedly pulled a knife on a man at a restaurant. A judge has dismissed some of the murder charges against the man accused in the death of an off-duty Vancouver police officer. Julio Segura stole a car, robbed a gas station, and led police on a chase that ended at the battleground home of Officer Donald Zahota. The two got into a fight. That is when Segura stabbed him in what he later testified was self-defense. 
Officers arrived and a Clark County deputy mistakenly shot and killed Officer Sahota. Segura still faces three other murder charges and this afternoon the jury heard closing arguments. And in Northeast Portland, police are asking for help finding a missing teenager. 16-year-old Phoebe Van Gorder was last seen around 10 in the morning on Wednesday, leaving her home on 108th Avenue and Thompson Street. Phoebe is 5'5 and could be wearing a hoodie along with socks and no shoes. Anyone with information is urged to call Portland Police. New tonight, now to a federal lawsuit joined by Oregon and Washington that could change how you buy concert tickets and critically how much you pay. Today, the Department of Justice sued Live Nation, claiming it uses illegal business practices to dominate the market. Catherine Cook spoke with a local lawyer about the impact on venues and artists. When it comes to the hottest stars, Americans are willing to pay big to see them live. But now the federal government says Ticketmaster and parent company Live Nation have been hogging the stage, so to speak. On Thursday, the Department of Justice filed a lawsuit accusing them of running a monopoly and using threats and retaliation to quash competitors. 30 state attorneys general, including Oregon and Washington, have joined the suit. Attorney General Merrick Garland described how the companies have cornered the industry as anti-competitive and illegal. The result is that fans pay more in fees, artists have fewer opportunities to play concerts, smaller promoters get squeezed out. They really um, strangle those that aren't on their team, okay, and my clients are not. Last year, Portland attorney Robert Parker Jr. filed his own federal complaints against Ticketmaster and Live Nation. He represents promotional company We Are Live Entertainment. Parker says performing in venues owned by Live Nation has cost his artists millions of dollars that should have gone to them. They take entire sections of seats that they sell for themselves and give my client no consideration for that. And they charge exorbitant rates and they have control of the venues. So they basically decide who lives, breathes or dies in the industry. Parker is thrilled with the federal lawsuit. He's glad it aims to separate Live Nation from Ticketmaster. The companies merged back in 2010. The Justice Department allowed it under this condition. Live Nation would not retaliate against concert venues for using other ticket companies for 10 years. In 2019, a federal investigation found Live Nation violated that agreement repeatedly. Garland outlined other questionable practices. Live Nation often sacrifices profits it could earn as a venue owner by letting its venues sit empty rather than opening them to artists who do not use Live Nation promotion services even during peak concert season. Live Nation responded to the lawsuit calling allegations baseless. They said the suit ignores key factors like increasing production costs and online scalping. Live Nation added the company offers fans, artists and venues, quote, better prices and better services than they would receive if these complementary businesses were separated. For Parker, complementary is not the word he reaches for when describing the entertainment giants. They really do have a stranglehold on the process from A to Z, and it's about time for that to end. Parker says today's, since today's federal lawsuit was filed in Manhattan, he may file his own action in New York since his artists have performed there in Live Nation venues. He wants to make his suit available for consolidation with the government's cases. David. Sounds like we're just getting started here. Thank you, Catherine. All right, we're following some breaking news right now of a homicide in southeast Portland. This is at the scene at 146 near East Burnside. Police say a woman was found dead inside an apartment. It follows reports of shots fired in the area. So far, officers have not made any arrests. 146 right now is closed for that investigation. We will keep you posted. Well, new at 11, there were more arrests on the Portland State campus tonight after some protesters chained themselves to a building. We have video from yesterday morning during a similar sort of situation, although tonight PSU says a campus safety officer had some sort of medical emergency while responding to the protest and was taken to the hospital. They are not releasing the exact cause. The university says in addition to the two people who chained themselves to the building, another group was arrested in a parking garage.